Hello everyone, Jack here, and today we're going to take a look at the Design Lab software. We're going to take a tour and show you all the new things that are going on with Design Lab. Now, Design Lab is a fork of the Arduino IDE, and uh, the purpose of the fork is to pair FPGA circuits with Arduino sketches. So, um, in Design Lab, every sketch has an Arduino or I'm sorry, an FPGA circuit associated with it. And it's easy to um, load the circuit to your FPGA. And if your cir circuit has a soft processor, then you can then load a sketch to that soft processor. Or if the case you have a Papilio Duo, you can uh, load a sketch either to a soft processor on the FPGA or to the AVR chip on the backside of the Duo board. So uh, let's just get into this and take a look at what is different with this new Design Lab software. So first thing, when you bring the software up, um, there's a table of contents. So the first uh, page that comes up is a table of content page. You can go through this. You can see all the projects that are available and click on any of them um, to open up that sketch and circuit. Um, or you can go, there's some new icons here. We've got a new Papilio project icon, a load circuit icon, a view circuit, and an edit circuit. So uh, let's just go ahead and make a new project. We're going to click on this. We're going to call it uh, Design Lab Demo. OK, it will bring up a new window. And let's just go ahead and take a look at what's happening behind the, the curtains a little bit here. If we go to Sketch and Show Sketch folder, so this is, uh, before in uh, the Arduino IDE, you would just get a new folder that would have uh, an INO file in it. Now in Design Lab, we have um, also the circuit directory that's in there. And this contains the Zynlinks ISE schematic-based projects. Uh, and it's for all of the board types, all of the Papilio board types. So we've got a ISE project for the Duo, one for the Papilio 1 250K, one for the Papilio 1 500K, and one for the Papilio Pro uh, boards. So you're not going to need to go into your sketch, but it's just important to know what's happening, or it's helpful to know what's happening under the covers. So this is what the directory structure looks like. Um, Design Lab pretty much hides that directory from here. You don't ever really have any need to go in there. Uh, you definitely don't want to go in and open the projects from there. You want to let Design Lab manage that for you. So in this case, uh, it depends on what board you have selected. We'll associate it with whatever project there is for or ISE project. So right now, we by default, we're selecting the Papilio Duo FPGA. So that means when I click on Load Circuit, View Circuit, or Edit Circuit, it's going to automatically use the circuit in that directory for the Papilio Duo or the Xilinx project in that directory for the Papilio Duo. So uh, having explained that, let's take a quick look at View Circuit. What this will do is it will bring up uh, a PDF. And if we look at our directory, that corresponds to the PDF for the Duo. Now, the thing that's important to know about this is that this PDF is not dynamically generated yet. Uh, we have plans on doing this in the future, but uh, weren't able to accomplish it yet. So whoever makes the circuit or makes the library that uh, your circuit is associated with, um, they will have had to have printed out the schematic view to a PDF for this to work. If there is no PDF or if the PDF is older than the bit file, then you'll get an error message letting you know that uh, this view functionality may not match your circuit. OK, so this load circuit, you click on this. Actually, we, let me connect a FPGA board real quick. So if we click on this load circuit, um, this will find the bit file that should already have been generated with your circuit. and load it to your FPGA. Okay. 
So this will once again automatically find the correct bit file that's associated with your Xilinx project. You don't need to worry about what's in the directory or anything. Just use these icons. Um, and then if you want to edit the circuit in uh, Xilinx ISE, you first of all need to make sure it's installed on your system and then just click the edit circuit icon. Okay, so um, once you have your circuit up, so once you have uh, Xilinx up, usually what I do, it brings up this big transcript console that takes up a lot of space. I usually first thing toggle this so that uh, I don't see the console, and then I find the top level file. You'll you'll know what that is because it has a tree icon with two branches on the bottom, and then the top level in green on the top just double click on this this brings up the schematic and uh, you can you know then modify the schematic and there's other tutorials we're not going to go through how you uh, the full process of this I, I just want to give you a quick overview so if we were to edit this schematic and then synthesize or generate the bit file um, then when we went back and we hit this load circuit it's going to load the new circuit that we just generated okay so uh, some of the other new things are there's a new Papilio menu uh, you could do a new Papilio project and that does the same thing as the icon we used earlier uh, there's a button to make a new design lab library we'll cover that in a little bit um, you can bring up the Papilio loader This lets you, if you generated a bit file somewhere else that you, you wanted to load, this lets you do that. Um, there's also the uh, logic analyzer client that you can access from here. So if you, one of the example projects in the beginning table of content is to you an example of using the logic analyzer. So there is a symbol available in Design Lab that you can drop into any of your circuits and connect a logic analyzer. This is a, the client you use to access the logic analyzer. Uh, and then there's just some web pages uh, like there's common problems that people run into with Design Lab and so this is in the Learn website where you could see videos talking about all the common problems that people run into. So, and then the, these are generally just reference uh, links to reference pages and that sort of thing. So, uh, kind of the next major bit of functionality that we should cover is if you want to make your own design lab library, and this is kind of for more advanced people, but one of the, uh, the main goals of design lab is to make it easy to share your projects. So, share FPGA, so share sketches coupled with circuits. Uh, or to make a library that other people can use. So, um, actually, to better show this, I think I missed an important thing. Let's go back to the edit circuit. So, I kind of glossed over this, and maybe I should have talked about this in better detail. But uh, when you, one of the, the features, of design lab is that when you go into a circuit and under the symbols all of the libraries uh, design lab libraries also have FPGA symbols associated with them which I like to call chips so these are the building blocks that you can use to make your FPGA circuits and we've got stuff like a, a VGA controller that connects to a wishbone bus uh, to the game Duino um, hardware that you can uh, use to uh, have VGA output on your standalone circuits, uh, different clocks um, to convert from the 32 megahertz uh, clock on the FPGA board to any speed that you you could need, like a 50 megahertz or a 25 megahertz, uh, and so forth. 
So the libraries available in Design Lab are really kind of the key functionality of Design Lab. And it's really important that uh, it be easy for people to make libraries and share them. So that's what we're going to take a look at now. So if you go to Papilio and then New Design Lab Library, it's going to open up uh, wherever your user library location is. And let's just take, let's just call this test. Okay, so it's going to, Design Lab will open up two new windows. One window is going to have the example code that's associated. So it, it works just like the Arduino libraries, but expands the concept to also include circuits. So every Arduino library usually has an example that comes with it. So one of the windows that comes up is the example uh, page. But also, what also comes up is a page where you can edit your library and specifically edit the FPGA circuit portion of the library. So you can uh, click on this chip designer which will bring up Xilinx ISE and a specially made project that allows you to edit the symbol that's associated with this library. So if we click on the top level, we see that this is our, um, this is the symbol for our library, our test library. So this is just a demo symbol symbol now you can go in here and you can edit the symbol and turn it into whatever you need it to be okay and then in addition to so that's a quick and easy way to make the symbol uh, but you also need your projects the circuit so the symbol is pretty much like the chip so if you have a VGA if you wanted to make a VGA chip you would make first make the symbol and then you need to have that symbol in a circuit to demonstrate how it works. So let's just bring up the, the example circuit for this particular uh, new library that we're making. So if we bring up the top level again, we will see that we've got a ZPUino soft processor and it's connecting this new test chip that we made, it's connecting to a wishbone slot. And so we would synthesize this and provide it as an example to go along with this library. Okay, so now if we uh, take a look at the sketch for the, or the Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong thing. If we take a look at the folder for this library, there each library has uh, you know different components. First, this is what you're used to seeing for Arduino sketches, is you'll see the C++ and the H um, uh, library files, which that still is here in Design Lab. Um, and then what we have now is that we also have this is the symbol so any folder that has a SYM file that goes into your design lab libraries directory that symbol file or that that defines the chip is automatically going to be pulled into Xilinx ISE uh, environment um, and then we also have the circuit directory just like we did with each sketch it works exactly the same way now, the interesting thing about this, or not the interesting thing, but uh, the, the next step with this, let's go ahead and close this. So once you have a library, or if you wanted to look at any library, that you could look at your library folder and see what libraries are available, or you could go to, to the directory site and download a new library. So let's go back to our initial uh, demo sketch. So we can associate any library available to us. We can associate the circuit in any library uh, to our sketch. 
So if you recall, when you create a new sketch, it does include a circuit. So if we go and we look at the sketch folder, uh, it has a circuit. And right now, the, our sketch is associated automatically with that circuit. So if we view circuit, we're going to see just a blank circuit. Now, say we wanted to uh, use the library, the test library that we just created, we could override the circuit that's automatically associated with our sketch by virtue of being included in the sketch directory. We can override that directory and instead use any circuit from the library by typing in define circuit and then the name of the library. So now that the, the test library circuit is associated with this sketch. So if we hit view, oh, actually, what did I, maybe I named it something else. Uh, no, it was test. Uh, so anyway, if we click view, we should see the circuit that we created for that library that has the test chip or test symbol. Okay. Okay, so uh, I think that covers uh, most of the basic differences between the Arduino IDE and Design Lab. And uh, I hope it was not too long-winded and uh, hope it was helpful. So thank you for watching.